assort your dominance. You just ate people to show off that you're the superior. I find SCP videos super cozy. This one is exploring the SCP Foundation, SCP-3000. Uh, and then a word I can't pronounce. Anna Tashi... Yesha, Anatashisha, Anatashisha, Anatashish, Anatashish? No, that doesn't seem right. Anatasha. Because there's an A at the end. There's an A at the end. What you talking about? There's an A. So it has to be Sha at the end. Anatasha. Like Anatasha, Anastasia. But not Anastasia, because there's a T. SCP 3000. Anantashesha. There you go. That's how you say it, Anantashesha. The SCP Foundation is aware of a number of entities that could be considered gods or godlike in some way. Oh, this is a god SCP. Like, you know how like there's like Jesus is an SCP? Some of these are actually contained by them, while others are uncontainable, either mm. existing outside of our physical dimension or for some other reason. For practically all of these though, the Foundation treats them with extreme caution as they represent little more than threats to our existence. There is an exception, however, in SCP-3000. Wait, do you not know about this time? And God is an SCP, including Jesus and um, Abel. Abel, Abel, his sons, I don't know how. I don't know the Bible, guys. Don't, don't crack to me. Just, like, let me be right. Let me be right. Its status as something godlike is debatable, which we'll discuss later. But it is a rare example of a thaumiel entity, an anomalous creature that the Foundation utilizes to help their operations. Simply put, SCP-3000 is a massive eel located in the Bay of Bengal near India. Oh, the eel's in India! Uh, okay. 3000's full size is unknown, but is believed to be between 600 and 900 kilometers long ending in a head 2.5 meters in diameter. 3000 is not necessarily contained, per se, but since it rarely moves, the Foundation simply patrols the region of the bay where it's located and prevents any diving expeditions in the area. I want to see area. you go into a church and ask the priest which SCP Jesus is. <laughs> you know I would, right? I would be like, ooh, hi there. So, um, which SCP is Jesus? I would love to know so I could do my SCP research. <laughs> my, oh, am I underwater? This is perfect because look, uh, the eel's underwater. I'm just visiting the eels, guys. It was discovered in 1971 after a number of Bangladeshi fishermen went missing after drifting near the Indian coast, and the Foundation stepped in to investigate. Its biology is not well Ooh. understood by the Foundation, but they hypothesize- That's a cool looking art. I wonder where they he gets some of this art. I'm just turning up my computer a little bit. ...size that it doesn't actually require any sustenance in order oh. to continue living, but it is carnivorous. Guys, wouldn't that be fantastic if you didn't have to eat to live and you just got to eat for funsies to, to assort your dominance? You just ate people to show off that you're the superior? It's unknown exactly what happens to prey it consumes, but during feeding, 3000 excretes a thin layer of a viscous substance that Whoa. the Foundation has dubbed Y909. Its existence as a massive eel, hundreds of kilometers long, would certainly classify it as an SCP alone, much like SCP-169. But that's only the beginning of its anomalous traits. We've discussed cognito hazards a few times before. Have you heard about our Lord and Savior Cthulhu? <laughs> Every time I hear Cthulhu now, all I can think about is that Cthulhu song. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. ...can alter an individual's mind or way of thinking. And SCP-3000 itself is a cognito hazard. Direct observation of it will result in head pain, paranoia, fear, panic, and memory loss or alteration. And even being in a certain vicinity of the eel can result in these effects. Oh. These effects are further described in a log discussing the initial discovery and encounter. Do you think somebody summoned him with the Dragon Balls? Or with SCP-3000. A team descended in a submersible, and all of them were feeling uneasy. 
but one in particular began sweating profusely. Okay, in my opinion, if you find out about an aquatic SCP, just leave it the frick alone. Like, we don't need to be going down into the ocean to discover an SCP. You just leave the SCP in its natural habitat. Just don't let people go into the ocean. Simple as that. Humans don't belong in the ocean. We don't have gills. Stating that he was missing something, but he couldn't figure out what. He begins to act more erratically as they descend, expressing doubts about what exactly he's supposed to do down there. Other members of the team began to express similar feelings. When they finally Ooh, saw the that's a cool picture body of the eel the erratic individual began whimpering and had to be sedated as he muttered oh. the word no over what? and over when they finally approached the head several other members were complaining about feeling hazy unsure of what they were doing here the captain wrote it off as nitrogen intoxication scp 3000 turned its head to look at them and the sedated member began barking and shrieking, claiming that it was in its head, until he smashed his face into one of the potholes, and they had to ascend due to the cracks. Does this freaking uh, eel make people go crazy too? Do uh, most SCPs make people go crazy? He had mortally injured himself, and as he lay dying, he said, There's nothing, nothing, nothing. Despite this incident, a diving expedition was ordered to personally assess the creature and investigate the source of the thick gray fluid that had been- See, Fallen, I also have aphantasia. I have no pictures in my head. And while sometimes I think how amazing it must be to have pictures in your head, there is ways that us without pictures in our heads have like have strength like we never get traumatized by imagery because i cannot be haunted by imagery if i see something violent gruesome disturbing it goes away from my brain because i can't think about it because i can't picture it over and over again compared to people with like severe ocd and stuff they have like haunted images of things i don't get haunted and observed around its head Three members of MTF Orion 9, Kingfishers, were sent down. The water was dark and cold, which was to be expected, but other problems began almost immediately as the team becomes confused over their call signs, oh. both mixing up who has what designation, and one of them even being confused by the word designation. Oh! Oh! The leader also addresses someone back at the command station who had been dead for two years. What? Regardless, command tells the team to continue towards the entity, but each of them are completely confused about where they are. As they continue approaching, one of the members begins to utter ominous phrases concerning oblivion and dark eyes. SCP-3000 begins to rapidly approach them, and their radios go silent for 30 seconds. Oh my god. Uh, somebody thinking somebody's alive that died two years ago? What the heck? When they come back, it's clear that the team is in chaos, and one of the members has been eaten. The leader seems to have completely forgotten who he is, where he is, and what he's doing. He soon gets eaten as well. Only one of the team remains, and he still seems to be somewhat coherent, claiming that it's extremely difficult to form thoughts while near 3000. Oh. He says that it's coiled inside of his head, and that it's just sitting there in front of him. He sees the fluid seeping out of its skin around its head, and he goes to retrieve a sample, sending it up towards the surface. He finishes by saying not to send anyone else out here. His breathing could be heard over his radio. <laughs> Dreams! They happen! <laughs> How long does it stay on? Is this here forever? Okay. <laughs> forever! For three days before ceasing. I mentioned Ooh. at the start that SCP-3000 is a thaumiel entity, meaning it somehow assists the SCP Foundation in their operations. And you may be wondering how a giant eel that messes mm. with your head does so. Mm. The answer is in the gray fluid excreted from the ah. entity, called the Y909 compound. 
The Foundation utilizes a large number of amnestics during their work. They secrete, he secretes a weird fluid? What? Chemicals that cause an individual to forget certain things. Oh. These chemicals are vital for keeping the secrecy of the Foundation and the SCPs intact, as well as helping many SCP personnel cope with things they have experienced. For a number of years, the Foundation's amnestics were rudimentary, breaking down fairly quickly in storage, causing a number of side effects, and had often questionable efficacy overall. The inclusion of the Y909 compound has greatly increased the stability and effectiveness of the Foundation's amnestics, however, allowing them to store for much longer, a significant decrease in- Oh my god, Ark! Which, like, I don't- do you, th do you think, like, in IRL, there's anything that can make people forget? Side effects, an increase in suggestibility and memory clearance, and little to no intrusive memories years after their use. The Foundation has come to completely rely on the Y909 compound, with no means to synthetically reproduce it, and so the ATZAC protocol is introduced. Ooh. The protocol is simple enough. It involves deliberately feeding a sedated D-class to SCP-3000, which causes it to excrete the- <laughs> They're just like, let's just get, feed them a sedated D-class so that they can secrete their amnesia fluids. The Y909 compound. A specialized team of deep sea divers then approached the entity within two and a half hours after feeding, during which its cognitohazard effects are lessened. Wait, was the freaking organization 13 doing, uh, freaking, was harnessing its secretions to, for amnesia for their, their soldiers? What? They collect as much as they can of the fluid and return to the surface. The rest of the SCP-3000 report concerns two doctors, a researcher, Dr. Krishnamurthy, and his staff clinical psychologist, Dr. Manava. The psychologist was assigned- Whose face? Who is this person? No, I know that who it is, but I mean like, who is the- is this real person? Is this a real person that they just put- took the picture? Or is this like, a CGI picture? ...to the researcher after he attempted to exit out of the SCP-3000 monitoring submarine without diving equipment. The researcher begins discussing how he- He kind of has a Lego face. You know how the Lego little minifigures have like really big- like square heads, that's the kind of head. No offense to him, I'm, and nothing's wrong with having a square head, guys. He feels tired, and his body is beginning to feel disconnected from his mind. Hmm. He's forgetting things about his work and his life, and he's been having dreams featuring people he doesn't recognize, oh. and places he's never been. It's clear that his proximity to 3000 is greatly affecting his memories, as he is unsure if he's even married, or if he has children despite having five of them. He does see 3000 in his mind, however, and at this point he begins discussing Anantashesha, the king of serpents in Hinduism, that lies beneath the god Vishnu in the cosmos. He recalls that his mother told him once that when the light of the universe had gone out, Anantashesha would be all that is left, past the end of time. He believes that SCP-3 what? what? 3000 is Anantashesha, a god that exists across all of time simultaneously. He says, In defiance of the nothingness that comes after this, all of this, there is Anantashesha. There's a chance that my memories might live on, that I might be remembered like the memories I've seen have been through me. I don't... I don't have proof of this. I wonder if the memories he's having are the memories of his past, like his life that he's forgotten. You know what I mean? Like imagine you live a life and then this like this secretion is making you forget. And then you g slowly get these like these like images in your head of this, this these people you don't know. But they were people you did know. And now you think it's some God, but it was truly just amnesia all along. It was just amnesia after all. This is, this sounds like a freaking soap opera and I love it. But when I looked into its eyes and saw what it showed me, 
I was afraid. I'm merely a mediocre man, Anand. This was a fear that I have refused to acknowledge for years. A fear of irrelevance. That no one will know who I am when I die. Do you guys have that fear? I know some people have that fear, like that when they die, they'll just be forgotten. But I don't have that fear. If people forget me when I die, well, it doesn't matter. I'm dead. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm dead. I won't be there to worry about people forgetting about me. My existence stops existing. So therefore, I'm gone already. <laughs> It doesn't matter. Forget about me. As soon as I'm gone, you can forget about me, bitch. Like you don't need to. You don't need to be hung up on me. <laughs> I'm not that amazing. <laughs> Afraid of being forgotten. Afraid of my life being meaningless. Afraid of being alone. Mm. Afraid of dying. There is a terror within me that I cannot. I think the only fear of death that I have is the fear of dying painfully. I don't like being in pain. I don't like pain. Uh, but nowadays with like the drugs we have available to us, it's not going to be a problem. But that's a fear. Like what if you're in like a freak car accident and you're just like suffering until you die? Like, you know what I mean? But this creature, maybe they'll make you forget about your suffering and pain. Not reconcile Anand. I won't lie to you and tell you that the maw of the Naga does not terrify me as well. But between this and the infinite dark I have gazed into... I've made up my mind. Dr. Krishnamurthy was held in containment for two days before being released. Three hours later, he approaches the airlock to the submarine while weeping and prepares to open it. Proximity alarms begin to blare as SCP-3000 approaches the submarine. The doctor puts on a diving suit and exits the submarine before anyone can stop him. 3000 approaches him and opens its jaws wide. The last thing the doctor says is that he was wrong. Uh -huh. and sobs as the eel consumes him. The rest of the crew begin preparing to carry out the Atzak protocol. Oh my god. That, see, that's a sad realization. This is why you don't glorify eels in the water. Because then when you realize they're just a massive, annoying eel in the water, you die sadly. <laughs> We're given some excerpts from Dr. Manava's journal, in which he discusses that he now has to figure out why Dr. Krishnamurthy became suicidal, and how- Yeah, because that's an interesting, interesting thing. Like, I still am going off of the amnesia thing. That's what I'm going off of. ...to prevent it from happening to any of the other personnel. He writes that he's not a very religious man, and doesn't believe SCP-3000 to be anything other than an anomalous eel. He racks his brain thinking about his father and his teachings of Hinduism, but cannot recall much. Although he blames this less on the eel and more on his own willful forgetfulness. Mm. He was allowed to look through Krishnamurthy's effects and keep any that he wished. And so for some reason, he decides to take a statue of the god Ganesh. Manava is aware that his continual proximity to SCP-3000 is draining his memories, See monsters? both from what his for? youth. There's a freaking fly in my room. What the heck? Sea monsters? Uh, what do you mean, sea monsters? They're, they're here to secrete amnesia on you. And more recently, he makes an attempt to learn some Hindu poems and songs, but can't seem to memorize any of them. We're given a memorandum from the site director that elaborates somewhat on the Y909 compound and the Atzak protocol. The Foundation originally believed it to be blood, but it's more akin to a prion slurry. Prolonged exposure to the compound is pretty similar to prolonged exposure to 3000. Some of the biologists believe that when SCP-3000 consumes a human, it is breaking down some part of their brains that makes them sapient. Uh -huh. And the residual substance from this process is Y909. They also found that SCP-3000 is not digesting these humans at all, and their bodies are still inside of it. In other words, SCP-3000 is capable of breaking down and devouring the human mind, causing them to forget their own existence, 
And the Foundation is purposefully encouraging this in order to create powerful amnestics. The Ethics Committee and the Classification Committee are looking for ways to make this more tolerable, but since the Foundation really depends on these amnestics, the process continues. Hmm. The final log is another journal page from Dr. Manaba. He has been spending a great amount of time studying the effects of SCP-3000, but still has no idea what would cause a sane man to step out of an airlock into its mouth. Earlier that week, he had knocked over a picture of... Could he really be that sane if he stepped out of an airlock and went right into a serpent's mouth? Could he really be that sane? ...him and his family, and found that there was writing on the other side, oh. with his name, his wife's name, and his daughter's name. However, the writing was in Dr. Krishnamurthy's hand, not his own. <laughs> this puzzled Manava, and he began to be stressed by the uncertainty of it. Finally, he went into the personnel archives and discovered the truth. The woman was, in fact, Krishnamurthy's first wife, and the girl was one of his daughters. Manava had believed that they were his wife and daughter, but more than that, he had memories of them that he now realized were in fact Krishnamurthy's memories. This realization causes him to finally understand exactly what SCP-3000 does. It breaks down and destroys human consciousness, the spark of thought that makes us unique and what we believe to be a soul, and then scatters it. It leaves a husk behind that is nothing more than electrical signals passing through matter that will someday be what? become inert. He writes, If even I can't remember myself, how can I expect anyone else to remember me? I have forgotten my own life, and I am strangely apathetic at this revelation. I will fade into the darkness, as thousands before me have, and thousands after me will. No one will care, as I am forgotten. I do not despair for my own sake, but for us all, you and I, we will all face obliteration. I am not important. You are not important. Vast droplets of irrelevancy stretching eons in the sea of time. We may f You are as important as you want to be, Chad. Don't let this SCB tell you otherwise. Fight against it, but our enemy is inevitability. I do not think that the eel is a non -tashesha. I don't think it would matter if it was. What is clear to me now, as I feel myself coming apart, is not that the eel is some mythological creature, or divine serpent. Perhaps it's just a primitive creature that eluded us, holding no malice. Perhaps it really is a primordial deity, harboring resent beneath the surface. Hmm. The eel <gasps> is not the heart. Speak for yourself, crazy man. I'm super important. Cross mud craw. Hey. Is the eel just fucking Godzilla? Harbinger of my demise, or humanity's doom. The eel is not the end of all things. It only shows us what the end looks like. And in spite of everything we might believe, every ideal we hold or providence we pray for, I know this much is true for all of us. Our end Venus. will be a forgotten one. Dr. Manava was later discovered near the airlock <gasps> after consuming a significant amount of raw Y909. Unresponsive, he was moved to Site-151 for analysis. Wait, he ate the secretion? SCP-3000 is a dark... Pretty please, after this one, you'll find it interesting. SCP. And the concept of destroying memories and human consciousness makes what would otherwise just be an enormous eel much more interesting. Existential dread affects many people from time to time throughout their life, and it's not unusual to be concerned with who will remember you, what will they remember you for, and ultimately, mm. your purpose here. Dr. Manava was probably right that SCP-3000 is not a deity that exists throughout all of time. 
but it is certainly a powerful entity. There are many SCPs that can kill, or maim, or horrify humans, but there aren't that many that can destroy what it means to be human. And that makes SCP-3000 pretty unique. This is interesting. It's like an existential dread SCP. It's this like idea that we are nothing but n we are nothing, honestly, and it just like ex it destroys your existence as a human being. <coughs> Very interesting. Someday soon, perhaps in 40 years, there'll be no one alive who has ever known me. That's when I'll be truly dead, when I exist in no one's memory. I thought a lot about how some, someone very old and the last living individual to have known some person or cluster of people... When that person dies, the whole cluster dies, too, vanishes from the living memory. I wonder who that person will be for me, whose death will make me truly dead. That's kind of deep existence. Mm -hmm. 